Hello and welcome, it's episode 3 in this, the Longines World's Best Racehorse Ranking Show. And we're back to fill you in on the movers and the shakers of the month that's been. We've got some great new features and then we'll look ahead to what's still to come. It was another month of exciting racing around the globe, with the spotlight predominantly on the US and the UK. There was five days of Goodwood, there was excitement in Paris, and in America, the Jim Dandy Stakes and the Whitney Stakes. It's Nick's go with a wire-to-wire -wire victory in the 94th running of the Grade 1 Whitney. Keep me in mind, an essential quality. They battle it out in the Jim Dandy Stakes. Essential quality, won it. This is a really commanding performance. It's Hurricane Lane dashing to the line. Ten clear in second position, just about Wordsworth. Alcohol Free has a very narrow advantage to Poetic Flair. Alcohol Free under Shane Murphy have won the Qatar Sussex. He's relentless and a day of the first horse since Galileo, the first derby winner since Galileo to win the King George. With so much brilliant racing going on around the world, it's inevitable that there's going to be an impact on the rankings. It really wasn't that long ago that we saw St Mark's Basilica skyrocket to 127 with a brilliant win in the Coral Eclipse at Sandown. So what about this month? Has there been a performance to knock him off top spot? Now this month we saw some horses climbing dramatically up through the rankings, recording ratings of 120 or above through some really impressive performances. Whilst we usually think they come via a Group 1 race, it's not always the case. At Goodwood this month, we saw Bayed with his win in the Group 3 Bonham's Thoroughbred Stakes, recording a rating of 120. And then in the Group 2 King George Qatar Stakes, Swissa also recorded the same rating of 120. Meanwhile, over in France, in the Group 1 Grand Prix de Paris, Hurricane Lane moved up another point to 121. So those are the movers, but what about the ones right at the top of the rankings? A four and a half length victory in the Whitney Stakes at Saratoga sees Nick's go jump into a share of fourth on a rating of 124. After finishing a valiant second to Adayar in the King George at Ascot, Mishrif's rating jumped from 122 to 124 in joint fourth. They join Nature Strip, who also sits proudly on 124. Alone in third on a rating of 125, we have the impressive Palace Pier. First, the English Derby and now the King George of Ascot, Adayar has earned a share of the top spot on an impressive 127 rating, joining Eclipse winner St Mark's Basilica. So with all the brilliant racing going on around the world, how has that affected things in terms of the jockey rankings? Well, if you remember last month, after scintillating June, sitting at the top of the rankings was Ryan Moore. But has anyone been able to knock him off top spot with a brilliant performance anywhere in the world? Still all tied on 40 points, but dropping down to joint fifth, we have Joe Moreira, John Velasquez and Yuga Kawada. A new entry into fourth following wins in both the Grand Prix de Paris and the King George of Ascot, it's William Buick on 44 points. Still locked on 48 points in joint second, we have Vincent Ho and James McDonald. And leading the way, still stretching his lead out ever so slightly with a third in the King George, it's Mr. Ryan Moore. Now remember, if you want to take a closer look at the standings and how the points system operates, take a look at the website, ifhaonline.org, where you'll find a full list of both jockey and horse rankings. So while there's no change at the very top of the Longines World's Best Jockey rankings, there has been a significant move from William Buick, with a win on Adair in the King George and on Hurricane Lane, the Group 1 Grand Prix de Paris, he now finds himself in fourth position. And if he continues in this rich vein of form, he could be giving Ryan Moore something to think about right at the top. We caught up with William at his home in Newmarket. I'm William Buick. Uh, I'm a professional jockey. I'm based in the UK, but I've been very fortunate enough to have ridden all across, all across the globe. Trying to get their poet's word, but Hawkbill leads throughout, takes the Shima Classic in great fashion. It's Hawkbill by three lengths. Hurricane Lane on the near side, closing with every stride. Hurricane Lane has got up at the Irish Derby. Obviously, I spend a lot of my time in Dubai. Um, 
through my position with Godolphin. I've been to Japan, I've been to Australia, uh, Hong Kong, America, Canada. You know, there's great jockeys in every corner of the world. They dominate their own jurisdictions. Exceptional jockeys, incredibly talented, big race jockeys. You know, when the pressure's on, they perform. I, I don't think you, you can ever sit back and think you, you, you're the complete package or, 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 or there's always something that you can work on, you know, the worldwide competition to be able to, to compete and prove yourself against those top names is massive. It's, it's, it's what it's all about. I mean, certainly the, the race that probably gave me the most satisfaction, I would say is easy to answer, is the King George on Adia. He's relentless and Adia are the first horse since Galileo, the first derby winner since Galileo to win the King George. It was quite important to get it right at Ascot and uh, to also be the first horse to do the Derby King George double in, in such a long time. He just goes and does his job and, and uh, he's very professional. I was very impressed with what he did at Epsom. He had the perfect trip. You know, he was drawn one. You know, the, the, the one draw in the Derby is, he's always been made a big deal of. But he was ultimately, he was a very good winner of the, of the, of the Derby. And uh, I was impressed with how he quickened and how he quickly he did put the race to bed. And I was thrilled for, for, for Adam, because uh, like you say, I, I know the feeling. and. Uh, and to see his face, uh, the, emo the emotion he was going through, was, 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 it was great to see. You know, he, he is a very impressive horse to look at. He's, he's quite, he's very big and well put together, very strong. Uh, he certainly put some strength on for the derby and it's very hard to compare horses. Different generations, they can't run in certain races, but then they put up amazing performances. But he's certainly up there with, with, with some of the best for sure. And uh, like you said, it's 20 years ago since a horse has done the Epsom Derby and the King George. So um, yeah, that, that shows you how hard it is. So um, even around for that, the King George this year was, was full of, full of good, good, good horses, obviously the best around. You know, I certainly think they'll be aiming him towards the arc, where he will go before then, if, if he will take in a trial, uh, or not, we'll see. They will do whatever whatever they think is best for the horse. It's Hurricane Lane dashing to the line, 10 clear, in second position, just about Wordsworth. I think Hurricane Lane, he's he's an improved horse since Epsom. He, he is a horse with a great constitution. He's, uh, he, he, again, he's he's very professional and he's a horse. He, he, he just goes about his business. He doesn't waste any energy doing anything else. Both, both exceptional horses. So there's more scintillating action coming up next month in the world of horse racing. We've got top class action in France and the US and we see the return of Group 1 racing in Australia. Add to all that the fact that we've got the Judmont International Stakes at York which was 2020's Longines World's Best Horse Race and was won by Longines 2020 World's Best Horse in the shape of Gay Arf. What could this year's renewal bring? And away they go then for this 49th running of the Jumont International over this extended mile and a quarter. Gay Arf away to a good start. Gay Arf has not seen another rival and he's going to see them all off here in the Jumont. He's relentless. Gay Arf completes a great Group 1 hat trick. Star of the Seas from Very Elegant fighting back. Star of the Seas, Very Elegant. I think Very Elegant's kicked back. Peter Turbo's going to try and run him down and he's gaining very fast in the closing stages, but Persian King has won. I hope you've enjoyed this month's episode as we've looked back on the very best action from the world of horse racing. And make sure you join us going forward as the Northern Hemisphere goes into the autumn and the Southern Hemisphere comes to life in the spring. We move ever closer to the conclusion of the Longines World's Best Racehorse Rankings towards the end of the year. Looking forward to seeing you next month. <laughs>